Welcome to Let's Get Motivated with Lamont Brown. And I have the distinct honor and privilege to help introduce the world to a fantastic individual who has already in a short period of time, just in a couple of months, have been able to impact millions of people. And you're going to actually see um, why she's been able to do that. And I want to help introduce the world to Miss Yearly Huff. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Thanks, Fan Lamont, for having me. All right. I'm fantastic. And thank you for coming. Sure. Well, we're just going to get right to the point. Right to the point. Um, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I grew up on the west side of Chicago in K-Town, mm -hmm. uh, the middle child. I have an older brother and a younger sister, okay. uh, raised by my grandparents. My grandfather was a preacher mm. and um, grew up in the ghetto, hard knocks. Hard knocks? Yeah, hard oh, knocks. Okay, okay. Look, looking at you, don't look like you grew up hard knocks. <laughs> but, you know, reading, you know, some inserts in your book, yeah, you was definitely hard knocks. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, speaking of your book, can you can you tell us? I know the name of it is The Veil of Victory, is, which is a memoir of tragedy and triumph. Yes. Okay. Tell us, you know, what's the the overall message in your book? Well, the overall message of The Veil of Victory is a story of a young black woman who grows up on the west side of Chicago, experiencing child molestation. Uh, spousal abuse, uh, low self-esteem, uh, then becoming an undercover drug agent, uh, finding herself in wait, this. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you was an undercover drug agent. Yes. Wow. Wow. C continue. It just, you know, it gets me every time I I read that. Okay. I hear that. Um, I've been, the young lady becomes an undercover drug agent and is introduced and exposed to severe and extreme, and extreme uh, racial discrimination and wow. sexual harassment that um, heighten to death threats. And in the course of filing charges internally through internal affairs, um, she receives a death threat and has to go to the FBI to get charges approved by EEOC, mm -hmm. which is a separate federal agency who would not take the charges prior. Wow. Um, then later being kicked out from the agency and in 1997 that occurred mm -hmm. and then in 2005 experiencing the ordeal of a 22-day trial where the house was set on fire yes, yes. and they were found not guilty even though they confessed to everything mm. and then having to get another set of attorneys to file an appeal and go through the process of appeal and ultimately having the victory and settling the case in 2008. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you went from being molested in the ghetto in yes. K-Town to an 11 year battle of this, this huge lawsuit. That was a lot. Yes. How, how did you how did you make it through? How can someone make it through that? How did you make it through that? God. Wow. My spiritual connection with God, which in researching for the book I found was uh, was much deeper than I could ever imagine. Wow. Wow. Now speaking of the abuse that you experienced, what message could you give others who have experienced that same thing? The message that I give uh, through this project, The Veil of Victory, is one of empowerment, enlightenment, mm -hmm. and encouragement. Just to say that we never know what life will bring us, what journey life will take us down, but we can and we definitely can o overcome and succeed. Wow. And wow. be victorious. That's right, that's right. I heard someone tell me that, you know, when a person is traveling down, uh, the, the, this journey, you know, of, of success, that accomplishing a goal is, is not the highest pinnacle of excellence, but it's who you become on the journey. Absolutely. You know, and you definitely yes. have, you know, become someone uh, great, you know. Um, but um, I was reading, um, I think it was on page 84, where you talked about the, the MEG unit and, 
you talked about how they were target, targeting um, black people and, and, and black neighborhoods and how difficult it was by you being the only African American and woman, you know, a part of this, un part of this unit. Right. Could you, could you elaborate on what you were speaking of in that, in that well, part that of the book? Well, that section of the book addresses uh, the Metropolitan Enforcement Group of Cook County, which was a, um, which was a MEG unit that was created to combat drugs um, in Cook County, unincorporated Cook County, Chicago area, and the suburbs. Mm -hmm. My unit was created out of funding uh, from President Clinton. Mm -hmm. uh, his target, his project was the war on drugs. Mm -hmm. um, I was on a team of five male whites, and I was the only black female. The wow. towns that we were covering were the poorest south suburban areas, which had high uh, levels of corruption mm -hmm. and increased level of drug infestation. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes uh, I would be able to go in and do deals all over the state of Illinois where others, my partners, wouldn't be able to. Wow. Wow. How, how was that? The experience was wonderful. I loved my job. Mm -hmm. I loved my job and I felt that I had a sense of responsibility and commitment to be a part of the solution and not part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm, wow. So, I mean, if, if the, the average person was, was to pick up this book, what would they learn after reading this book? They would learn that um, they would learn that no matter how um, devastating of a journey life that you have experienced that you can be victorious and you can overcome. You just have to persevere, you have to be determined, and you have to be focused. Okay, okay. Wow. Um, I'm, I'm excited to be, you know, part of, you know, the, the, the team that, that you have uh, encountered on this journey, you know, the people who have come alongside to help you get this message out. It's definitely my honor and privilege to be a part of this journey with you. But what characteristics do people need to overcome the, the pain, you know, that, that you experienced? A major characteristic um, that I feel one would need is just hope. Mm -hmm. Hope and faith and a belief that you can overcome that and you can. Mm -hmm. You can. Wow. You really can. Wow, you got to want it. You just have to hope that you can make a difference, hope that you can affect change, hope that you can be different, mm -hmm. hope that you can not be status quo, but mm -hmm. you can be the leader. Mm -hmm. is, is that something that, you know, that, there's, there's young women out there that's, that's been molested and going through certain kind of different kinds of abuse and, and they're crying in their in their secret place that that quiet place and they feel like they they all alone and there's no one that that can really understand what they're going through and hope is is, is the message for them absolutely absolutely because if god can do it for me definitely most certainly he can do it for you for anybody who desires mm -hmm. so how can this book be a, a guide or, or a map, you know, for others? You know, they pick it up. I mean, how could they actually use it to help guide them through and navigate through whatever challenges they may be experiencing in life right now? The Veil of Victory can be used uh, as a road map just to say that keep getting up every day. Mm -hmm. Keep desiring change. Keep hope in your heart. Wow. And keep determination on your mind. Wow, wow. That's and time and story after story yeah. and example and example in the yeah. Veil of Victory, you will see that. Okay, okay. You okay. will experience that. You will actually travel down that road with me mm -hmm. at that particular moment in my life. Mm -hmm. And you can see who I am today mm -hmm. is certainly something totally different than what you read in the pages of the Veil of Victory. Mm. So 
each page they read that gets stronger and stronger. Absolutely. And, and, and their hope will just continue to increase and their belief will get, yes. get stronger. Even if they don't believe in themselves. Yes. They can, they can believe in the experiences you had and, 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 and begin to believe in themselves. Absolutely. I stand as a living witness and testimony. You can read the stories in the Bible and say, oh, that's way back then, whatever. Mm. I'm Cut me, I'll bleed. I'm here. I'm mm. living. I lived it. It's true. It's a never been told true story. And I'm here in the flesh to say, yes, I survived through it. And if I can survive through it, mm -hmm. definitely, most certainly, you can too. Okay, fantastic. And now, I know you've already began writing, you know, your second book. Absolutely. And I know there's some things, you know, <laughs> coming, coming uh, into fruition real soon. Yes. Can you, can you tell us, you know, um, what does moving forward for Yardley Huff mean? Well, uh, this project is, uh, the Veil of Victory is not only a project, it is a movement. Mm -hmm. It is a movement of enlightenment, encouragement, and empowerment. Uh, one of the avenues uh, in this project is uh, my second book, which I finished. It's called The Veil of Victory, and it serves as a 10-week guide to uh, talk about 10 characteristics mm -hmm. and verses from the Bible to match those characteristics. And then I take opportunities, some people call them trials and tribulation, I call them opportunities, from the veil of victory and uh, the affirmations and visualizations that I was doing during those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a 10-week journey. Mm -hmm. And it's also a workspace created for okay. the participant to create their own visualizations wow. and affirmations. So when they complete this 10-week journey, they will have a book to put in their arsenal wow. to hold them and keep them and affirm them yeah. through this journey, their journey. Yes, okay. Real quickly, tell us about how you can become my, my superhero. Well, the material in the Bale of Victory is uh, a little heavy, and so I wanted to make sure that I uh, embrace uh, our young people. Mm -hmm. So from my character, I've created Superhero Huff and um, Special Agent Phaedra, who is me, and she is a, um undercover agent, uh, Christy Love type, no nonsense, okay. taking no taking no mess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I see, she... I see you holding a big gun there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She moves back to the hood to restore safety and hope mm -hmm. to children and increase literacy. Mm -hmm. And so she moves back to the family building on the west side and it's a three flat from the outside, but inside she's got it all gutted out with a fireman pole. She lives on the third floor wow. and she has a basement okay. with her okay. toys, with her... Uh, Past, she has a tunnel all the way to City Hall, and she's on wow. call. She's a tech savvy, <laughs> electronic geek. Yes, yes, okay. Superhero. Okay. okay, well, listen, I'm looking forward to it, and I know that you have some some T-shirts here that yes. that represents our superhero, you know. And where can they even get a hold of some of this, uh, some of the products, and and how can they purchase your book? Sure. They can uh, purchase a book on www.theveilvictory.com, -E one word. Okay, okay. And okay. call your local bookstore and ask for it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, it's been my pleasure, you yes. know, to actually, you know, spend this time with you and be a part of this journey. Thank okay. you so much. Okay. And I definitely, definitely want you to visit their website. Uh, the veil of victory dot com and invest in yourself and I know your life will truly be changed and I just want to leave, leave these short words with you and these words from Harriet Tubman who said that after she re uh, received all the accolades for a friend over 300 slaves she said I could have freed thousands more if only they knew they were slaves know who you are <laughs>